we have a vaccination program and a an inoculation that is effectively effectively creates an inadvertent gain of function experiment where we are setting up the hurdles for the virus to solve this problem evolutionarily and to reemerge on the basis of the alteration of the spike protein, which is the only protein we targeted. All right. So that last time we spoke, you said this is going to produce escape variants, that that's what we should be looking for. And you believed that we were going to see escape variants that were both more infectious and more virulent. Mm. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, I, I was, in fact, not distinguishing that much at that point between, you know, the higher level of virulence and infectiousness. I almost thought, you know, when the virus is going to become highly infectious, that was really my conviction, then uh, automatically it's going to spread much faster and doing much more harm in the population. So, um, so that has come out, I guess. I think everybody acknowledges that uh, this mass vaccination now has really uh, promoted, I should say, the expansion of highly infectious variants. I've never been saying that the mass vaccination induces the mutations because of course we know it does mutations, right. eh? but it, it enables the virus, you know, to do a natural selection between all the different mutants that are produced anyway, and to select those that are most appropriate to overcome this pressure, you know, on, on the infectiousness of the virus. This is to say, we'll select the more infectious Infectious variants and enable those to become through the system the, that we discussed, the mass vaccination, the same medium everywhere to become uh, predominant, of course, in the population. So uh, that is true, but at the same time, and that is probably the, maybe the next question you want to ask, it did not automatically, on the contrary, in fact, imply a higher level of virulence. Yeah. So that is what it's, it's something that I also learned yeah. that, um, and that is also why I'm saying it's not the end of the story. There will be a second step that the virus will take if we continue, you know, uh, well, continue mass vaccination by, for example, vaccination, uh, vac vaccinating children or by boosting people. And boosting people is like an automatic process. We have Omicron circulating. That is far more you know, stronger as a boost than coming with a new Omicron vaccine, for example, right? Yes. Well, it does raise the question, and I think many of us have scratched our heads over it, why we are still um, transfecting people with Wuhan version spike protein. Why has the, I mean, if there's one, there were so many downsides mm. to the way they chose to vaccinate here. If there's one upside is that you could swap out the antigen that you've targeted for an updated version without changing anything else. Mm. And yet we haven't updated this, which is an odd fact. Do mm. um, you have an interpretation? Why, why did, nevertheless, they continue? Why did they, why are they still recommending boosters with the original version of the spike protein yeah. rather than an updated one? Well, you know, but it's, it's, it's interesting that even in, uh, you know, uh, 2022, where we have all this access to, you know, science and technologies, that vaccinology has remained an extremely empirical thing. And as a matter of fact, and the answer is as easy as that. They continued and they found out, well, you know, I mean, seems like the efficacy is going down. But for some reason, for some reason, this thing, believe it or not, still seems to protect against severe disease. So now I'm asking you, do you know about any vaccine, any vaccine that in fact makes even the vaccine more susceptible to infection, right? And nevertheless protects against severe disease. Do you know any vaccine that does not protect against disease, but that protects against severe disease? So it's, it's not a logical approach, but as a matter of fact, they continue and they find out, even if the duration of that protection, even against severe disease, is declining. Everything is declining. Initially, we had an impact on transmission. Then that was no longer the case. We had an impact on disease. No longer the case. We had only an impact on severe disease for a duration of a couple of months. Now we have 
impact for a few weeks on severe disease, yeah. right? And so empirically, they say, you know, we, in fact, what they're saying is we don't understand how this works. I'm, I'm just telling you, I don't know after all these years of vaccinology, I don't know of any vaccine that has these characteristics. It protects only against severe disease, not against disease. It enhances even the susceptibility of the vaccinees to infection. Nevertheless, they are protected against severe disease, right? Well, yeah. how convinced are you that that work is to be taken at face value? Because I've seen at least one analysis that mm. suggests it may not be a robust fact. No, and I agree with you that it's not robust. That's why I'm saying it's... it's. So, oh, so you're saying this is suspicious. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right, all right. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, sorry for... than remarkable. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, remarkable, no, it is suspicious, but you're asking me why uh, they're still con uh, continuing this, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm answering you, it's an empirical business, right? Oh, right, right. And, and, and they fi found out that, you know, it's still protecting against severe disease, so they're saying, you know, let's continue with this Wuhan strain. <laughs> well, Maybe, yeah. I understand why they're continuing the vaccination campaign, because mm -hmm. unfortunately it would appear to be... Uh, a straight up business decision, right? Mm. That they are obsessed with putting more vaccines in more arms. I can say there's a, obviously they're being paid on a per vaccination basis mm. at some level. So they have that interest. I think they also have a perverse interest in getting rid of, of the control group because yeah, yeah, there's well, so much these, adverse yeah, okay. uh, uh, signal, adverse event signal. So anyway, there are lots of reasons they seem to want to vaccinate people, yeah. but I'm not, yeah, I'm, what I'm curious about is why, as long as they were going to do this, they didn't update the antigen. And I can think of I can think of a business reason that they might have. You know, there's this funny business around the uh, uh, emergency use authorization came with special liability protections. Mm -hmm. They then got FDA approval, but they are still delivering the emergency use authorized version even though they are supposed to be essentially the same why are they doing that because it preserves their special protection from liability maybe if they updated the antigen under the fda approved version they would lose that so i could imagine that that would be the case yeah it would also take time they know that the antibodies uh, as you know are directed against the receptor binding domain which has a high level of variability and i think the main criterion uh, for the public health author uh, authorities is, is to keep the hospitalizations under control. And that is, so to say, what the vaccine, according to them, still does because they are just looking at what is happening today. They are not interested in the evolution. They are not interested in seeing what is happening tomorrow, what is going to happen in a few months from now. Yeah? So they are making these snapshots. Okay, what are the number of hospitalizations? We continue with this vaccination. Okay, infection rates go through the roof. It's the first time that we see, see all this is very suspicious. It's the first time that we see that the morbidity and mortality rate is no longer following the infection rate during a natural epidemic is following. Now it's completely disconnected, right? Yeah. And, uh, but they're saying, you know, don't care, don't care because we still have the hospitalizations under control, right? So there's no need for, you know, for an update or whatever. Right. right. Where, <laughs> so, you know, one, yeah. one of the things that I, uh, I don't want to get us too far off track, but one of the things that I've been, of course, wondering about is, um, what I see is that we did essentially the inverse of what we should have done on every front. I would flip almost every bit the opposite direction. Uh, right? I, I, I agree. Right. None of the things that have been done make was, any sense. It, it, and all, and it could be scientifically justified. Right. Yeah. So, and, and to me, this is very alarming because mm. you can get incompetence can give you something like a random response. It yeah. can't give you the inverse of a great response. Yeah. Right. Mm. That's something else. Thank you.